Thanks for that, Ollie. As Ollie mentioned, my name's Sam Crowther, and I'm the founder and CEO of a cybersecurity company called Casada. Now, Casada exists to do one thing, and that's to challenge the economics of both defending and launching high volume automated attacks. Now, who here today has been involved with or witnessed an organization being hit by bots? You're not alone. We've been working with an organization who, for the sake of this talk, I'm going to refer to as Acme Corp. Now, Acme are a large global business, and through their e-commerce platform, generate more than a billion dollars a year in revenue. Ten years ago, they started heavily investing, driving users to transact with them online. A few years into this process, they noticed a bit of a strange trend, that whilst their unique user count was through the roof, as a percentage of traffic, less and less users were actually transacting with them. Now, this made them put together a bit of a team of engineers, operations, and marketing folk to figure out where they were going wrong. And they came to a bit of a stunning conclusion. They had a bit of a web scraping problem. They noticed this because for seemingly no reason, their overall web traffic levels would jump by a few percent at a time and stay, stay at that sustained level. They also noticed that there were strange patterns in their traffic that weren't following the typical daylight hours that their actual customers lived in. After looking through all the data they collected and analyzed, they came to a bit of a stunning conclusion. They estimated that 20% of traffic to their website were bots stealing content. One in every five users was there to take data that was valuable to them. For the next 18 months, they played this awesome game of whack-a-mole, which I'm sure some of you here have played yourselves. They used web application firewalls to block IP addresses, block user agents, and as you can guess, that was effective for the better part of a week. It just drove their adversaries to create more and more sophisticated bots. They started using residential proxy networks. They started rotating user agents. And they started automating more and more sophisticated browsers. Eventually, Acme realized they weren't going to be able to adequately defend their data as they moved forward. And this is when they came to us. After a month of working with them in production, we asked them to put together a graph of all the page loads that they'd served during the first four weeks of this production test. And this is what they came back with. Now, notwithstanding this enormous drop at the start, which we'll get to in a second, it's very clear towards the back end that there are spikes that don't follow any other patterns that the rest of the graph does. And as I mentioned earlier, this was all too common. After we'd been working with them for about a month, we actually collected all the traffic data that we'd processed after analyzing the behavior of these browsers that were coming and loading pages, making sure there were humans driving them and trying to discern the ones that were being driven by bots and we put together this graph. Now, the first thing that's incredibly clear is that their estimate of only 20% traffic being bots was so wrong. In reality, historically, they'd actually been serving roughly 70% of their traffic to bots, meaning of their 120 million pages that they were serving to customers every month, 95 million were going to competitors stealing data. Now, this left a measly 20-odd million pages to actually go to their legitimate revenue-generating customers. Because we were able to offload this traffic from ever hitting their infrastructure, there was a number of benefits they realized, and the first one being that of performance and stability. Their infrastructure no longer had to care about dealing with the 95 million erroneous page loads every single month. It could actually serve their customers faster. And this meant that during large spikes in traffic attacks, their websites would no longer grind to a halt and just go offline. We also enabled them to glean far more accurate insight out of the data that they were already collecting. Their analytics data was no longer polluted with all these bots that were there to steal content. They could actually see 
what their legitimate customers were doing. And finally, we prevented scraping. We actually enabled them to protect their data. And Acme had been monetizing this on the back end with other organizations, but when people could just come and take it for free, didn't incentivize people to buy it legitimately. Now, these problems were really what we we're looking to address, and we've seen them, we see them occurring for two main reasons. And the first one is that people don't truly understand the value of their data, both to themselves and to other companies in this world. And secondly, the barrier to entry is so low. Almost any novice programmer these days can download one of thousands of free tools and look at one of thousands of free online tutorials and create a tool that most companies would struggle to protect themselves from. When starting Casada, we wanted to achieve three things. We wanted to simplify security. We believe that no organization should have to have a team of 20 highly experienced security engineers because the reality is there's not enough to go around. Any company should be able to secure themselves effectively. Secondly, we wanted something that was effective, something that actually did the job that it says it does. Unfortunately, it's just all too common for security solutions these days to not do what they say they do on the tin. And finally, the economics. We wanted to make it more economical for everyone to protect themselves, but make it far more uneconomical for our adversaries to launch attacks. We ended up designing a solution that sits a reverse proxy in front of a web application and attempts to understand the users and the bots accessing a website. We're going after the one thing that makes attacks economical, and that's automation. We use two main mechanisms when attempting to determine the difference between, the, between these illegitimate bots and the legitimate customers. Now, the first one's what we call browser fingerprinting. This is where we go beyond user agent checks or IP blacklists, but attempt to truly understand the browser that we're delivering this content through. We check for signs that it is, in fact, legitimate Chrome and not Chrome controlled by Puppeteer or one of many other automation tools. This means that from the very first request, we can actually stop bots from ever gaining access to any systems behind us. Now, the second part, the cryptographic challenge, is where things get really fun. Before we allow someone to submit data to a website, say to test login credentials or to validate a stolen credit card, we require them to solve a proof of work. A mathematical proof of work which gets exponentially difficult at our desired rate. So this means that when an attacker wants to, say, validate 100,000 usernames and passwords or access 100,000 resources, they all of a sudden introduce the compute overhead of 100,000 exponentially difficult mathematical proof of works. Meaning that an attack that should have taken 10 or 20 minutes to completely exhaust may take hours or days, which is completely uneconomical. Now, the only way that we're able to protect some of the biggest websites, not only in Australia but in the world, is thanks to AWS. We leverage CloudFront at the front end of our deployments to ensure that our customers' users get the best experience possible because they see the content they need as fast as they can. At the next layer down, we leverage ELBs. ELBs enable us to not have to worry about load balancing across multiple data centers, but can do it out of the box so that our customers get the highest reliability, but our customers' users get the best experience as well. Next is the EC2. Attacks come in large volumes, and we needed a platform that could very effectively scale to both these illegitimate spikes in traffic, but then also legitimate human spikes. Now, we collect enormous amounts of data, and we needed somewhere to put it, so we chose Amazon S3. Not only is it scalable and secure, but it's incredibly economical, which means we can start to glean incredibly valuable insights from all of this data that we're collecting today. Now, attackers don't stand still, and neither do we. We've got a pipeline of innovative security products that we're really excited to launch over the next few years, which are going to continue to disrupt 
the economics of both defense and offense. We're incredibly excited to start using machine learning models over all of this awesome data which we're already collecting today to prevent attacks which haven't even been designed yet. And I'd like to leave you with this. If you could challenge the economics of your adversaries, who may be your competitors, from hitting your applications, how would that impact your business? We do this day in and day out for organizations around the world, and we'd love to work with more Australian companies to help them fight that fight. Thanks. <laughs>